Did he slip up? Uh, only one slip up. <laughs> and it wasn't even in this one, it was in part one. Oh, what was it? Not that this is a fanboy moment or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> when they go through the back cave, uh -huh. the giant penny. Yes. <clears throat> the real date's supposed to be 1947, not 1917. <laughs> I, I own its world's finest number 30 from 1947, case, case of the Penny Plunderers. But no, seriously. For those of you streaming, you know, um, one of the most remarkable things, speaking of part one, is the fact that each of these films uh, holds up individually. And the choices that Jay made in order to do that, to effectuate that, I think is outstanding. Taken together, it's like what I tell people about Chris Nolan. Um, to me, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises is one movie. It's one story in three acts. And to me, these two parts make up the full story, but it's incredible how you can view these independently of each other. Thank you. I hope you guys feel the same way. I mean, one of the things that I One of the things that I wanted to do, because we had the two movie format, was to not introduce anything too early in part one that didn't have a payoff in part two, because it would just be weird. Like, if we started to show Reagan and Superman in part one, but never go anywhere with him, you know, as a theater guru or an audience, you're going to feel like, wait, there's all these loose threads. And I think Bob Goodman did an amazing job with, you know, moving everything into part one that just needed to tell the, the, the Batman, the Bruce Wayne story, and then the part two, saving that for basically you know, balls to the wall, like, what his uh, re-emergence into this world, into this universe, what that causes and, and, the, and the kind of the uh, ripple effect and how you, you know, it brings back Joker, old, old enemies, it brings back rivalries with Superman and, and the whole kind of, like, uh, relationship, like, what happened to them? I thought they were friends, you know, based upon what we know today with comic books and the animated stuff, like, what happened? And it's a great what-if story. And, uh, and that's why I wanted to really make each movie feel like its own. Like, number one was going to be like a slow burn, it's all character piece, and number two was going to be a big action piece because it's, you know, when you watch them one after another, I need to build up to something. So when you watch them both together at some point, for those of you who want to sit through three hours with of animation, you'll slowly see the, the building. And you'll actually see, uh, you know how I think last time I talked about how I used water as a theme. You'll see water here, as you saw, where Superman, when he's, dying and he starts absorbing the solar energy from the plants, the, it starts to rain on him. So it's almost he's getting a rebirth, uh, just like Batman did in part one. So, and also at the end, I wanted, uh, when his funeral, it's snow. Whereas before that, it's, it's water, it's rain, we have ash snow, but at the very end, at his funeral, it's pure <coughs> snow. And that's like, it's kind of like a, kind of a theme that I kind of put throughout the film, as well as the color red. There's a lot of things. Oh, by the way, pick up the DVD, because I have a couple of sequences that I chose myself that I have commentary on, and you'll get to hear about like, all the little nuances of what I did, why I chose certain things, and kind of throw out some spoilers, like Easter eggs that I put in there. I'm sure you guys picked up a couple of them. Do you guys see the 89 Batman Batmobile? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a couple of them all over the place. Pick up the DVD 